Um, in this video, I'm gonna make a basic setup to make a basic simulation for the fabric where, with the gravity. So let's start by making a base fabric, the geometry for the fabric. So I'll just use the grid for this example. <coughs> and I'll make it the shading to be smooth wire shaded so that I can see the lines. <coughs> and let's go and in, dive into the geometry node and the thing I would like to do uh, so that these lines gonna be a something called spring constraint I mean there's not such a thing in Houdini but I, I'll just call it like that so the line itself will be a constraint to connect those points together on the neighbors <coughs> and and that would uh, be a basic setup for the making a fabric uh, as a like a plane like this <coughs> but uh, right now the square is made with uh, constrained with four springs but in order to uh, in order not to like deform this uh, squares <coughs> too much uh, I also need like a constraint on the cross uh, direction for each squares each faces to make it more uh, static for each uh, faces so I'm gonna just use point wrangle to make a additional line to the to each of the faces oh, not the point but uh, I'm gonna use a primitive <coughs> wrangle and um, for each primitives uh, I'm gonna get a vertices prim vertices And I'm gonna make a empty point array. And for each vertex and vertices, uh, get the point number from the vertex using vertex point. And <coughs> push this point index into the PTS array that I made. And use the points inside the points indexes inside PTS array. I'll add two cross lines for each faces for each face uh, using add prim and the type polyline and pts 0 and pts 2 for the first line and another one will be pts 1 and pts 3 and now you can see that for each face you got this cross line and I'm gonna use it for the constraint spring, spring constraint. <coughs> and in order to use those on pop solver, I would <coughs> need to just extract those points and lines, primitives with necessary information. So I'm gonna first I'm gonna convert line and convert those primitives into lines and by doing this you'll get uh, each primitive have its own less rest length and <coughs> each primitive um, each line would have been treated as one primitive okay 
and also maybe I could put a rest position to store the initial position for the points but in this case I might not use it uh, just in case I'm just gonna put it here and <coughs> another thing I need to set which point to be a tagged or anchored or pinned which doesn't affect it by the forces like gravity so say I wanna pin the corner of the grid four points so in order to select those I guess the simple way is to get the bounds first of the total primitive and if you <coughs> look at the bounds point position I have like eight points here and I can uh, use some expression in a group expression to see the neighbors, see the nearest point with each point in this <coughs> uh, grid, a network grid compared with the bounds points and if the distance is close enough like less than 0 0.01 then make it a group so I'll call the group uh, const uh, meaning as a constraint and I'll write an expression here okay so <coughs> first of all I need to get the near point from uh, compared with the group points using the uh, own point position and by this you'll get the index of the near point in the inside the bounds and let's get that position using this index and let's also calculate the distance between the the points the nearest point on the bounds and yourself itself and see if the length is less than 0 0.01 okay accept and make the group type point and let's hide these and I can see that the one that's highlighted uh, orange is the one that is that has the group const and as I assumed it's on the corner so that's good okay now after this uh, the final setup I have to do before going to the pop <coughs> or pop network I need to uh, set some attributes inside uh, for each point so I'm gonna use point wrangle <coughs> so there's a pop node called pop grains inside pop network and for to use that I need to set some attribute like which one's gonna be pinned or I mean fixed at specific position and stiffness and the weight how strong the pin would that be would it be so let's do that <coughs> first of all I have to uh, specify the target pin position so say if I want to uh, constraint if I want to fix the point position on the corner I have to set the attribute call target P to be at the initial position which is uh, at mark P and by doing this I'm setting all the points to have the target P but that's okay because there's another attributes uh, which you can control which ones to be uh, fixed 
So the other attributes uh, you need to set is the target stiffness. And I'll just set it to one. And the next one is the important one if so the next one is called target weight. So if the target weight is one, then the point uh, will be fixed to this target P. And if the weight is zero, it just moves freely. So what I want to fix is the one that have the group called const. So I'll say if I group underscore const equal one, <coughs> then set the target weight to one else set the target weight to zero okay let's check that uh, so to in the point section I have target P which will be the position to be fixed and target stiffness all the number is one and target weight so only the corner one has the value one okay seems good and that's all for the SOP uh, settings uh, let's go into the pop network uh, to actually do some simulations so let's uh, put a pop network here and go inside here and <coughs> Uh, first of all, uh, I have to uh, use the geometry that I input for the pop source, uh, particle source. So click the source first input and set the emission type to all geometry and go to the burst. And you don't want to like, like make a new points every frame like these. So <coughs> set uh, dollar sign f equals to one. So the only on the first frame it will create the particle. Okay, <coughs> and that's it for the point source, I think. And next is the important thing. I'm gonna use point grain. Uh, point no pop grains uh, in order to <coughs> make a fabric base so for the pop grain uh, the setup I need to do is first I can set some constraint iterations to make how <coughs> uh, the resolution of the simulations the constraint resolutions but I'll keep it as 20 for now and <coughs> I think I don't need an internal collision so I'll set the zero and I would need the explicit constraint which will use the uh, rest length attributes for each primitives so I'll set to one <coughs> and maybe I can cramp up the stiffness to make it uh, hard or maybe thousand <coughs> and I think that's good <coughs> and now uh, I think it doesn't move at all for now because there's no force so let's make a gravity <coughs> after the pop solver and let's see and yeah this is it easily done <coughs> the fabric simulation has been done just with the setup uh, uh, but for now the <coughs> the output is only the point and the curve which might not be <coughs> usable for renderings so I'm just gonna feed back those point position to the original grid so that you can use it for the rendering okay so for that you can 
uh, to <coughs> make a point wrangle and connect the grid to the first input and connect the pop network output it a simulated geometry on the second input and <coughs> override the point position with the uh, point from the second network from the pop network <coughs> in the same point number uh, point and that's it simple as that I'll s keep it real time and yeah that's just it so let's try clump up some rows <coughs> like 20 by 20 <coughs> And let's do it again. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Pretty simple and <coughs> pretty useful for making all sorts of point based uh, physical simulations, I think. Such as this kind of fabric. Okay, thank you.